dear students today we will be discussing about tidal energy conversion system so in this class primarily we will be discussing about the working principle of tidal energy conversion system and then its different schemes of harvesting this tidal energy and also we will be discussing the origin how this tide is generated and how this kind of conversion takes place and finally we will be solving some numerical problems for calculation of tidal power so key discussions will be working of tidal energy analysis of tidal power plant and of course we will be solving numerical problems so the tidal energy utilizes the natural rise and fall of coastal tidal water caused principally by the interaction of the gravitational fields of the sun and the moon. The rise and fall of tides contains large amount of potential energy. The highest level of tidal water is known as flood tide or high tide and the lowest level of tide water is known as low tide or ebb. So you can see here complete one tide cycle is about 12 hours 25 minutes and we can have high tide and then it passes to low tide and then it goes again to the high tide. So this is complete cycle and if we consider this high tide to the low tide this is half cycle and it is happens in a period of 6 hours and 12.5 minutes and this difference between this high tide and low tide is known as range and now we will discuss how it works the principle used for Harnessing tide energy consists of a pond filled through sluice. So sluice is nothing but the rapid control gates and this sluice when tides are high and emptying it during low tides via an undersuit water wheel and then it produces mechanical power. So it can be viewed something like this. So this may be ocean and this may be basin and we can have this berries and this is sluice okay and this is turbine generator. So here water has to be you know, stored in the basin and then when that goes off then it will pass through this turbine generator and electricity can be produced or mechanical energy can be produced and further with that can be converted to electrical energy. So if we have to tell about origin and nature of the tidal energy we must know something very generic like tides are produced by the gravitational attraction of the moon and the sun acting upon the rotating earth. The moon exerts a large gravitational force on the earth which is about 70 percent of the tide force. So we can see here so when is a full moon then what happens this water on the earth surface will be pulled away by the gravitational force of this moon and that is how it looks something like this and at the same time this earth that means solid mass will be pulled in other side. So that is how it appears something like this because of the centrifugal force. 
and because of these two forces what appears is something like in both the sides it is like pulling effect okay and this is because of gravitational and centrifugal forces okay and that's how it is explained like surface water is pulled away from the earth on the side facing the moon and at the same time the solid earth is pulled away from the water on the opposite side due to rotation of the earth moon system producing a centrifugal force and that is how the ocean height increases at both near and far sides of the earth. And uh, tidal phenomenon occurs twice every 24 hours and 50 minutes that we should keep in mind. Again, when the sun, earth and moon are aligned, you can see this is moon and there is a full moon, there is a new moon and the sun. If these are aligned, then what happens? The lunar and the solar tides in phase. So, these are in phase and that produces net tides of maximum range known as spring tides. Okay? And then second case is something like when the sun art and the moon art directions are perpendicular to each other, then what happens? The solar and lunar tides are out of phase. So, what you can see these are out of phase, lunar tides are out of phase. And that is producing net tides of minimum range which is known as nip tides. So, when the condition is something like this, then the kind of tide what we will get that is a minimum and it is called nip tide. Otherwise, it is spring tides, in this case spring tides. Okay. Tidal stream generator makes use of the kinetic energy of moving water to power turbines. Right? So, these tides will pass through the generator and then we can produce electricity. So, this tide range can be amplified by different techniques. Some of the techniques are run up, funneling and resonance. Despite their complexity, the tides at any location can be predicted with high accuracy. Right? So, what are different components of a tidal plant? Component includes dam, barrage or dike, which is a barrier constructed to hold water. Then we have sluice ways. As we have learned, sluice ways are nothing but rapid control gates, which are used to fill a basin during high tides or emptying it during low tides. And third component is bulb type power turbine generator set, and it contains in a steel cell where alternators and the special Kaplan turbines are housed with variable pitch blades. So, now let us estimate the tidal power associated with single filling or emptying of a basin. So, let us consider water trapped at high tide in a basin area which is represented by A and allowed to run out through a turbine at low tide. So, let us draw it. So, this may be we have the support and then
ওকে ফাইন সো টারবাইনস আর প্লেসড হিয়ার সো ওয়াটার ফ্লোস দিস ইজ টারবাইন এন্ড দেন উইল হ্যাভ স্লো টাইড লেভেল and we'll have high tide level this is a high tide level high tide level and this is nothing but rains are and we can have sluice here so this is a gate kind and this is a sluice and we are considering a small section here so this is the h and this is the h and basin is here basin area is here a and this is dam or berries and this is something like power generation from tide which is represented here okay so turbine is here okay and these are support okay so now we are considering the basin area is a okay and first what we will do is the potential energy in the mass of water the potential energy in the mass of water stored in the incremental head dh above head h this is the head and above the head this is the incremental head we are considering for the analysis at the moment so then how to calculate this potential energy this if we write dw is nothing but dm so if mass is dm here dm then we have z into h this may be equation number 1 and dm is nothing but rho a into dh right this may be equation number 2 and then if we are interested about potential energy dw which is nothing but if we use this dm here in the expression 1 then it will be rho a z h and dh which may be equation number 3 okay so now the total potential energy may be calculated the total potential energy of water stored in the basin which is represented by w which is equal to 0 to r cancel 0 to r dw so this can be expanded so here rho a z all are constant rho a z then we have 0 to r h dh which is nothing but h square by 2 so rho a 
z it is something like h square by 2 0 to r. So, finally, it will be rho a z r square by 2 this may be equation number 4. So, this is nothing but the total potential energy earlier the potential energy dw was somewhere here ok it is small and then when we are trying to have all the energy what is stored in the basin then we have to integrate over the range right. So, that is how we got it now. So, rho a z r square by 2 and this is in joule right this is in joule and here rho is the density of water a is the basin area z is the acceleration due to gravity and r is the range right. So, we know as the time between consecutive high and low tide is 6 hours already it has been mentioned 12.5 minutes and which is equal to about 22 350 second then the power which is expressed in equation for the potential energy in equation 4 is to be utilized within this period. Okay. This point is need to be noted. Now, say for example, if we try to calculate the average theoretical power generated, then how we can do it? So, P average, if we consider the density of sea water is 1025 kg per cubic meter and then z is 9.81 meter per second square then we will have time will already we know which is equal to 22350 then how you can calculate it is something like we have rho this is in second and rho is 1025 and then we will have 9.81 is the z value and then a r square divided by 2 and then we will have to multiply it by 2 to 350 okay then what you will get is equal to 0.225 a r square. So, here what we have done it is so earlier expression the equation 4 what is nothing what was the potential energy and it was represented in joule. So, we know joule per second is what right. So, already we know the time between consecutive high and low tide is 6 hour and 12.5 minutes which is equivalent to 2 to 350. So, this need to be utilized within the period right that is why this time we have considered here and that is how it is converted to what right. So, this equation maybe you can represent as 5 right. Now, from here what we can conclude this tidal power developed is directly directly proportional 
proportional to number 1 is basin area, basin area and 2 square of the range right, square of the range. These two are very important points. Suppose if we increase the range, then you are expected to get very high power. Okay, fine. Now, what calculation we have shown? This is like theoretical power, right? So, what will happen in actual situation? Of course, the amount of power what we we'll get as per the theoretical calculation that will not get in the actual power plant or actual calculation, right. So, what are the primary causes of reduction of efficiency or power developed? So, it may be number one is friction losses, friction losses of the fluid. Maybe we have conversion efficiency, of the turbine and generator. And one more concern is, like as we said, we have high tide and low tide and then we have turbine here. Okay. So, this turbine cannot operate at zero head. Okay. So, there must be some kind of minimum head which gives some kind of economic impact of the power plant. Right. So, this is one of the very important aspects. So, that is why the turbine has to stop I should say, stop when the head reaches a minimum value r below which the operation becomes uneconomical. Okay. So, this cannot be 0. So, we need some kind of ranges. Okay. So, it may be this may be 3 meter remains for example and this may be 13 meters. Okay. So, capital R and small r we need. So, if we have to consider this two condition, then how the expression will look like? So, then we can find out this W, this potential energy, which can be varies from small r to capital R, this rho A Z H d h okay. and then if we do the integration then it will be rho a z then h square by 2 small r to capital R. So, it will be something like half rho a z capital R square minus small r square and this may be equation number 6. Okay. So, under this condition, if we are interested to calculate the average power generation, then it will be something like P average will be 0 0.225 A R square minus R square. Okay. And this will be in joules and this will be 
in watts okay or if i am interested to express in terms of flux then power per unit area which is nothing but 0.225 multiplied by capital r square minus small r square and which will be in watts per meter square okay so this is the expression for calculation of power generated in one filling or emptying of the basin right is a power generated in one filling or emptying of the basin that means it is tight power under this condition right so once we know this head or range then we can find out what could be the power developed right now let us discuss the different schemes by which this energy can be harvested so there are many schemes like single basin single effect then single basin double effect then we'll have two basin link basin then two basin paired basin and uh, tidal flow or tidal current scheme so let us discuss one by one so first this single basin and single effect scheme this power is generated either during filling or emptying of the basin so only one sector we are producing the power right so here in the ebb generation cycle that is in low tide operation the sluice way is open to fill the basin during the high tide and water is held till a suitable head is created by the receding water the stored water is allowed to flow through the turbine coupled to the generator till the rising tide reduces the head to minimum operating point and the cycle is then repeated and power is generated intermittently and in case of flood generation cycle operation the sequence are altered to generate power during filling operation of the basin and the sloping nature of single basin makes ebb generation more productive method so it looks something like this so we'll have high tide and low tide so we know the head and this is tidal bearers and turbine is located here so what happens tide basin is here so storage will be here so when it goes down it will rotate and power will be generated and again when it goes up that is in flat condition again it will be reversed and we can get power out of it and there are sequence of event happens during this power generation process so it appears something like this so it goes so this may be we have sluice closed and this period is known as filling period and then we'll have waiting period waiting then we'll have generation generation and here this is the point where generation starts start of generation and here generation stops
stops. Then again we will have waiting period. and then it is filling period and here at this point sluice is open okay so this is how the entire scheme works as far as generation of power is concerned through this single basin single effect scheme now let us discuss single basin double effect scheme. So here power is generated on both flood and ebb generation cycle. And here two way which is reversible hydraulic turbines are used and sometimes we need additional pumping to increase the output. So it looks something like this this is the basin and this is the barrage then sluice is here and this is the reversible turbine okay so water enters and then it goes to turbine generator and we can produce power okay and here in both the condition like flood and ebb generation power can be generated okay so what are the sequence of event happens like first inward sluicing to fill the basin, then holding period, then ebb generation, then outwards slicing to empty the basin, then holding period and then flood generation. So also we can demonstrate the pattern how it happens. So we will have this generation here then followed by you no know, we have filling this is filling then we'll have waiting then up to here we'll have generating Here sluice is open, opened and this is sluice is closed. Then again we will have waiting, and of course this is the emptying. This is filling and this is emptying. And is waiting and then again we have generation or generating okay so these are different uh, situation happens as far as power generation is concerned by using double effect scheme or single basin double effect scheme so now let us discuss about two basin link basin scheme so this is normally suggested to maintain continuous power supply so this scheme consists of two basins one topped up at high tide and other emptied at low tide thus a permanent head is created between the two basins the water flows through a turbine from the high basin to the low basin. So let us see how it looks like. So here you can see this is the top basins which is known as high basin and this is the bottom basin which is known as the low basin. And here power plant is located at the midway between these two basins. And sluice is here in both the basins and then barrage is here okay? and oxygen is located here. So most importantly, this is used for getting continuous power supply, right? 
and for two basin paired basin scheme, we have a paired basin consists of two paired basin scheme. The one scheme generates electricity on flood and the other on the wave cycle. The output is almost continuous. The two basin schemes are generally found to be economically inferior to single basin schemes. So, it appears something like this. The power plant is located here and this is the sluice for high basin and this is the sluice for low basin. So, it is like a paired, pair of two basins. And again, we will have one more schemes called tidal current schemes. The strong tidal currents are found in shallow seas, particularly where natural constriction exists, such as around headlands or between islands. The generation will be intermittent and the total power available may not be very large for this kind of arrangement. And capital cost per unit of power appears to be high for these configurations. And most importantly, we need to identify the appropriate uh, site for this kind of installation. And there are many power plants already been installed and uh, demonstrated its capability. There are some plants in South Korea, France, Canada, Russia, China and UK which are operational. You can see the capacity. So, maximum capacity so far installed is 254 megawatt followed by 240 megawatt in France and 250 megawatt is in South Korea and Canada they have 20 megawatt plants and again big plants are coming in United Kingdom which are under construction it is about 398 megawatt. As far as Indian scenario of tidal energy conversion is concerned. We have few potential sites like Gulf of Kombe and Gulf of Katz. A potential of 100 megawatt has been identified in Sundarbans, West Bengal. So, we can see the potential sites like Katz, South Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Odisha coast then gender ones. Tide ranges varies from 4 to 9, 2 to 4 and gender one it is 4 to 7 and tide current can also be seen here. So, maximum 3 which is observed at cuts. But we must know, so minimum tide range required for this kind of plant is about 5 meter. If we can have more than that then we can produce more power. So, that is the basic thing we must know like minimum head required or range required is about 5 meter. And this is the global distribution of mean tidal range. So, you can see here like color coding represents like deep color is more compared to the light colors. Again we can discuss something about tidal current turbines like Tidal current turbines exerts the kinetic energy in moving water to generate electricity. So, this working is similar to like wind turbine, but here fluid is incompressible. So, that velocity will be much much less compared to the wind velocity. So, that consideration we must have while designing this turbine. So, tidal current turbines must be able to generate during both flood and ebb tides and be able to withstand the structural loads when not generating electricity. So, these are different turbines used for generation of tide power like free flow turbines it looks something like this. Then we have girl of helical turbines and also we have lunar energy tidal turbines. So, it appears something like this. So, we can build this kind of turbines and uh, generate power out of it. 
and of course there are limitations of this technology like economic recovery of energy from tides is feasible in sites where the tidal range is about 5 meters or above. The optimum tidal power generation is not in phase with demand due to mismatch of lunar driven period of 12 hours and 25 minutes and human period or solar period of 24 hours. These turbines are required to operate at variable heads because head will be changing as tide is changing. So that turbine has to work under those harsh conditions. And requirement of large water volume flow at low head necessitated parallel operation of many turbines. So one turbine will not do the work. So there are many turbines we require that involves a lot of cost. That is how it is not so economical sometimes. And tidal plant disrupts marine life at the location and can cause potential harm to ecology. This is also one of the concerns of tidal energy conversion systems. With this, let us solve one numerical problems. It goes something like this. A single basin type tidal power plant has a basin area of 2 km square. The tide has an average range of 13 meter and power is generated only during the ebb cycle. The turbine stops operating when the head on its fall below 3 meter. We need to calculate the average power generated by the plant in single emptying process of the basin. If the turbine generator efficiency is 0.7. Also, we need to estimate the average annual energy generation of the plant. So, each solution goes something like this. So, now the given data are like we have basin area A is given as 2 kilometer square. Okay. Then we will have r is 13 meter, then small r is 3 meter and turbine generator is 70 percent is the efficiency. Okay. This information is given to us. Then first we can calculate the average power potential available. Average potential available which is nothing but we know the expression for average power potential available 0 0.225 into A then we will have R square minus R square. So, if you substitute the values here 0 0.225 multiplied by 2 into 10 to the power of 6 because this is in kilometer. So, it will be 1000. So, that means all the square. So, it will be 2 into 10 to the power of 6 meter square multiplied by r is 13 square minus 3 square. So, this will give a value of about 72 megawatt. Okay. Secondly, what you can calculate since the turbine generator efficiency is given as 0.7 or 70 percent, then you can calculate the average power generated.
will be 72 multiplied by 0 0.7 which will be equal to 50.4 megawatt ok. Then we can calculate the energy available in single emptying which is equal to half rho a z r square minus r square ok. So, if you substitute these values like density of water is we can consider 1025 kg per cubic meter this is sea water normally normally water we consider 1000 watt per meter square that is 1025 into 2 into 10 to the power of 6 into 9.81 this is 13 square minus 3 square. So, which will give a value of about 1607200 like a joule. Okay. Now, we know like one ebb cycle duration is 12 hours 25 minute ok and which can be converted to 12.42 hours ok. So, now how many cycles will be there in a year? So, number of ebb cycles in a year will be 365 multiplied by 24 divided by 12.42. So, which is about 705.5 and approximately we can consider it as 706 ok. So, this many cycles will be there in a particular year right. Now, by considering this we can calculate the average annual energy generation. which is equal to about the energy available in single emptying is 1607200 multiplied by 706 into 0 0.7 ok. This divided by 3600 ok and then we need to multiply with 6 hours and 25 minutes. So, if we consider this then what we will have we will get a value about 2.2 into 10 to the power of 8 kilowatt hour. So, for this configuration the annual energy generation will be about 2.28 into 10 to the power of 8 kilowatt hour. So, if you know like 1 kilowatt hour 1 unit which is nothing but 1 kilowatt hour if it is say rupees 6 then we can see like how much energy we can generate in terms of money like 2.2 into 10 to the power of 8 into 6 and this is rupees. So, that much of amount we can generate equivalent to that amount we can generate. 
right. So, we can extend our discussions by considering say basin area if we increase to 2.5 kilometer square and if we consider the efficiency of the turbine generator is say 73 percent and this range r is a 12 meter and small r is a 2 meter then if you do the calculation then we can find out the average power will be about uh, so average power generation will be about 57.48 megawatt. So, we can do the subsequent analysis and calculate the annual energy generation. So, it will be about uh, close to 3 into 10 to the power of 9 kilowatt hour. Okay. So, we can do the calculation and we can see like uh, what is the difference by changing the variables and what we can conclude. If we increase the area, then what will happen to the power developed and if we increase the range, then what will happen to the power developed. So, that kind of situations we can study by doing the calculations what we have discussed in this problem. So, now we can summarize the content what we have presented today. What we have learned is about the tidal plant is possible with a minimum tide range of 5 meter. So, if it is less than that, it is not feasible. So, we always expect that tide range is more than 5 meter. And both ebb generation cycle operation and flood generation cycle operation are important for power generation. And despite their complexity, tides at any location can be predicted with high accuracy. The theory of tidal power is similar to that of wind power with the advantage of predictable velocities of high density fluid. So, in nutshell, this technology does not require any fuel to produce power. So, what we are using only the water energy to produce power. So, it is a renewable form of energy. So, I hope that you got an overview of tidal power conversion system through this video lecture. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you. Thank you.